We're back on the Porsche 911 wide body back date project. We need to come up with a title for this build because I'm tired of saying that. So tell us what we should name it down, down below. Anyway, last week we worked on the 928. We got the rocker welded on, fitted up, and good to go. This week on the wide body back date project, we're gonna continue the front end modification. So we've already got the turn signal housings mocked up, the flares tacked on. We got the center air intake, fit it up along with the center latch panel as well. And of course the hood. So now what we need to do is get the front bumper modified, widened and ready to be mounted onto the vehicle before we go ahead and weld everything together in this permanent place. The winner of last week's giveaway, their comment was about how they used their McDonald's employee of the month or whatever it was, spatula, as a tool in their shop, and it's from like the 80s. And I had reached out to them, I was like, hey, email us your address and whatnot so we can ship out the Eastwood tools that you want. And they responded with an email of the spatula with a marker for scale, and I died. I, I, I just died, it was, it was glorious. So this is the OEM style front bumper, you know, the old backdate style. I had to get this bolted up to the car so we can then look at what modifications we need to make. But I already know, if I line this up here, as you can see in the corner, I need to flare out to match the flare. So that's gonna happen today. But first I need to get this thing bolted to the car, which means I'm gonna have to do some modifications to make sure I can actually bolt it on there. And I need to figure out what those are. <laughs> so originally, the you know, early bumpers, there's like a metal strap that wraps around the body and it gets bolted here. No. There's two kinds of bumpers. Oh. You're close. There is that, but that's not bumper. He was waiting. He was waiting the whole <laughs> <I was>. time. <laughs> he, he had that locked. He's so fast with that. Well, right. as soon as you start saying, well, I mixed now, this would have had a bracket. It would have had a bracket that okay. would have bolted to those. We talked about using, I thought, these two mounting points because yeah. they're already there. Do you want to use those two mounting points, you think? Or should we just make two mounting points here that are closer? I mean, I think I would use the holes that are already there. The big thing is you don't want to, you need this depth to be right. I know, and I don't the know. up and down and side to side is fine with oversized holes, but otherwise you're trying to shim it. Well, you can make up some of that depth. With sliding with, that forward with back. With sliding that yeah, forward Yeah, that's back. what I'm thinking, yeah. Right, yeah. So that'll just be a little bit slotted, just mm -hmm. in case. And also, we're making the whole front of this car, so it can be where we want it to be. Yep. But this is, yeah, th this is good and solid to hang off of. I like that. Okay. Aha, see? Hold maker 3000. I made it oversized so I can wiggle this around. Yeah, I can start bolting this thing together as I go. Safety first. <laughs> Logan's even got his on too. Oh yeah. Yeah, he's right. <laughs> Neo is in the building. did it. We got a successful cut. Uh, I definitely need to recalibrate this thing though because the circle's a little bit oval. Just slightly oval. Yeah. Unless there's a problem with the tip. I should check yeah, the tip. The tip could be like spraying to the side. Yeah. Because it's actually, you know, I think it's that's the problem actually. That'll make a difference, I think. Just a little bit. This video has been paid for and sponsored by Bessie. So over lunch, I like to come down to the creek behind the shop, which is directly adjacent to the golf course. And I like to hunt for golf balls. These are some fine balls right here. Hefty little guys, They're bright green, yellow. Excellent find. Gone are the days of having to use sticks to reach these little orbs of happiness. Now with these Bessies, 
They're completely waterproof and I can walk right into the water and pluck these little nodules oh, yeah. directly out of the ground. Unlike other competitors who use spray-on water repellent, these shoes use what's called Dymatex technology, which allows your feet to breathe, but also keeps the water out. These shoes could not only repel water, but you can clean them just by sponging them off or even just dumping more water on them. If you visit vessi.com slash crucible, which is linked down in the description below, and use the code crucible, you'll get 15% off your first order of Vessi's. How much to put my head under that? <laughs> like, I'll go, I'm gonna try to catch it. Five. 50? 50 bucks. 20? All right, so we have our starter piece cut out. I did kind of botch these slots like I kind of thought I would. They'll still function and I'll clean them up later. Right now, I just need to get this thing to work. Um, the other problem I just realized is this is pretty heavy gauge steel. It's literally plate, it's not the sheet metal. And we don't have a brake strong enough to break this. So... I feel like one of those big burly blacksmith dudes are just like... I almost died. Oh, okay. <laughs> I hit the edge of this one. <laughs> <laughs> I am not one of those big burly blacksmith dudes, that's for sure. That bolts, so that's a good sign, right? You can't like... No! I want to watch you sit there and watch me struggle. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Bet. Well... I know the one fits well enough, so I'm gonna make the second one so we can accurately bolt the thing up and make sure it really does work. It's like a long snake, doesn't it? <laughs> Crawling along and looking at you. See it? Body, and it's popping up looking at you. I like it. Like a sneaky little snick. Or a worm. Maybe it's a worm. So I ran into a couple problems with fitment because that side was actually a little different than this side. And by different, I mean like the spacing for the bolts and stuff are the same, but the angle of the actual, where the bracket needed to go was different. So I ended up actually cutting and tacking some segments of this to make it fit right. Right now the goal is to get brackets to fit this thing. I can clean them up later or remake them if I need to, but I think I can clean up what I have. So let's bolt it up and see if it'll be actually centralized on the car. Also, I found my stool is a great jig for this. Then I had to slot the holes to slide the bumper up. Right. Um, and I think we're okay. I probably w wouldn't go any further until we're closer to doing actual fitting. That, I mean, yeah. no, no, nothing in the front of this car except for the flares are tacked. The flares right. attacked, the rest are clean coated and screwed because right. yep. of that reason. And I'm annoyed because these turn signal, we'll call them buckets, they're just not great. Yep. I mean, you can see how not straight they are on the bumper. On you the can see part. it when you lifted them out of the box. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Like, I, I don't understand. I mean, I think that whoever made these just made them very quick to be used in a situation like this. And it's like when you buy a fiberglass and like, oh, they'll just do the finishing work later and right. put it apart. And some fettling the, required. Yeah. More than some. <laughs> However, I mean, the lights themselves are floating. Like, all pieces do float. So right. I get we'll it. We'll get it all worked out. Yeah. But yeah, I think the brackets are where they need to be until we're ready to fit and might have to modify slightly and then we'll stiffen them up a little bit and... Yeah, they need gusseted. Yep. Now that the bumper shenanigans are out of the way and that 
has taken at least 300 minutes off at the end of my life. At least that much time to <laughs> yeah. get them ready. I want to start working on the bumper extensions now. I think I like it out because it's out here. If yeah. it was pushed in there. Okay. Yeah, I think. Maybe we should do it in clay. Uh, yeah. We it won't take that long. Yeah. Okay. Then I, I, yeah, listen. I, I agree. I love, I love clay. Clay is awesome. <laughs> so clay is for moments like this where Tony and I disagree on a design or we're having trouble both visualizing the same, the same design. thing. Yep. And yep. not just for us, it's also for like, you know, the client and for right. Logan to understand because it's very important that Logan agrees and <laughs> yeah. also confirms everything that we do because he is the yep. last line of defense yep. between us and the internet. So, <laughs> so that's how we clay. make sure that everything is shenanigan free. <laughs> yeah. I don't like shenanigan free. I know, I know. Maybe like problem free. Okay. <laughs> so, shenanigans, right? <laughs> It's very important that these shenanigans <laughs> cause some pain to people because if they don't, then it doesn't establish an emotional connection. If there's an emotional... Don't park it out in the sun, and you're fine. <laughs> I mean, this clay is like kind of okay for the sun-ish, ish. Should be fine. It'll be fine. I think Armageddon's happening or something. Look at it. Oh, it's dusty. Yeah. I think it's going to storm. I, I, my bones are telling me my joints that's going <laughs> to yeah. storm. Congratulations, Speed Sultan Steve. You won this Roger shirt. And thank you, everyone else, for all your comments. We really appreciate them. Yeah, the power just cut out. And not even, like, three minutes after we filmed the, 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 the wind outside. <laughs> it's coming down. The plus side is we have our little backup battery pack, which I neglected to charge and only has 48% battery. <laughs> and I've already finished with like the heating up clay part, so we're down to the shaving part, so I can keep going. And I can't stop <coughs> over the dust. <laughs> <coughs> I don't know why it's killing do you, me. Do you need an ambulance? I have this roughed in now. It, this lifting here, because it curves around, I'm not gonna deal with shaping that. There's no point, I'm just gonna cut it back. Otherwise, I think it flows very well across the panels here. Um, obviously, you can throw the strip right here because that's gonna get tucked over slash cut off. Probably just cut off. So what I'm gonna do now is break this edge over. I'm gonna probably 
clique of this up or something and then run, run tape line on it that I like. I'm gonna flange this over. And if you can imagine that if I had a 90 degree bend in the edge of this panel, so I'm pushing this over, this material is not gonna wanna crunch together. So what I'm gonna do actually is use the kick shrinker here. I'm gonna pre-shrink this bend just a little bit so that when I go with the bead roller and go to bend it over, the goal here is that with the pre-shrink, it doesn't buckle up too much and just make the panel too wonky. Now, it is gonna go crazy and I am gonna have to do some work to get it back to where it is. Well, you know, where it is now. However, if I pre-shrink that, it mitigates, you know, 50% of that probably, if I can do it right. Because um, at the end, I have to be able to still get the kick shrinker in here and also stretch it a little bit to kind of walk the shape to where I need it to be. So I'm gonna start off by doing this. And it, it will, by doing this, it will fight me getting in here. So I'm gonna have to actually flatten it a little bit, but that's okay. That's called, that's called adjusting the arrangement of your panel. If you're just bending it in a way you can just bend it back afterwards, it's called arrangement. So I'm just gonna adjust my arrangement here. Jam it into the jaws. I'm gonna crunch it. See, now it's broken over. And sure, it's starting to wiggle up a little bit, but I can manage that now. If I hadn't done that, it would be a complete mess. It would not fit in the jaws of the machine, which I definitely need to tighten, by the way, because I'm looking at it, and it's got some crazy underbite going on here. Look at that. I think that'll work. The gap's not right yet, but that's okay. You have to cut that back a little bit, and then we'll make our top piece here. I did this time. I don't know why it worked this time and not last time. It worked so well, I overdid it. Can't have anything nice. So 
we've got the pieces made and mocked up. Now keep in mind, they are clecoed in place, meaning they're overlapped. So the gapping is not 100% perfect yet, but when we weld it on, the gapping and everything else will be perfected and beautiful and just lovely. A couple of things also to keep, we need to address, like right now, the gap here is not absolutely perfect underneath the lens. I do not like these light housings. And then you do need adjusted slash modified to have this fit correctly, which is also a, a very normal thing with these 911s that they, these, this whole like assembly in the front is, is very hard to get perfect. And we're gonna get it perfect. It's just, we did not put any time in this video. But overall, I'm very happy with these parts. I am happy with how they turned out. There's a lot left to be done on this project. We need to do a lot of shaving and weld different holes shut, including this front bumper. We still have holes weld shut on it and a giant hole to cut into it for the center radiator. The back end, we had the rear bumpers to modify and get them bolted up. Um, another thing to keep in mind too, with this build right now, the brackets that we made for the front bumper will be finalized later on. Right now, they are there to hold this sucker together. They'll need cleaned up as well. The top of the car, we're gonna be shaving the sunroof, which means we're gonna be deleting the sunroof, which means we're gonna be welding a giant hole in the roof shut, which will be a lot of work because that's a lot of panel to warp. So we'll be tackling that very soon as well. And uh, some other custom things going on in this vehicle. So stay tuned for more updates on this car coming soon. We have a big video coming out with a huge announcement on the slant nose. So you don't want to miss that one. Make sure you have your notification bell turned on. Catch you next week, guys. Later.